Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make a quick checklist in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I prefer to use Adobe Illustrator for pretty much all of my planner printables because it's just really easy to create checkboxes and tables and all kinds of stuff for printables. Um, there's tons of great software out there um, besides Illustrator for creating printables, but I just feel like I make printables so much faster in Illustrator and um, you know, they come out just as nice as any printable I've created in like Photoshop or InDesign or Excel or any other software that I've tried. So, um, so that's why I'm showing you Illustrator. And also, full disclosure, if it's a little bit echoey, it's because I'm hiding in my bathroom to make this tutorial. If my husband heard me making the tutorial, he would make fun of me and I would not be able to make it through this without laughing. So, that's why you might hear a little bit of an echo. But anyway, let's get started. So we want to click Create New, and I'm going to make this letter size with a, a half inch bleed, and click Create. And most checklists have some sort of header, you know, like um, if you want to do a day of the week, or if you want to label it task, or priorities, or goals, or just whatever is relevant to whatever kind of printable you're making. Um, so I'm going to make this like a weekly spread with checklists under each day of the week. So I'm going to start with Monday. And to make the header, I select my text tool. And I'm going to use this script called Pop It and Pinch Script that I downloaded from Creative Market probably about a week or two ago. And I've just been really obsessed with it ever since. Um, I've used it for so many things and I'm going to continue using it for this tutorial. And I've tightened Monday. Um, I'm going to close this color guide. Okay. So there's my header. And now I want to make a few checkboxes underneath it. So to do that, I select my rectangle tool. And I just click on the screen. And I like to keep my checkboxes about a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch just because I like the look of that. They're a little bit bigger, and I just like the style of bigger checkboxes. Um, but sometimes I make them about... 0.15 by 0.15, uh, just depending on whatever style I'm going for. Um, I always recommend, after you make a couple of uh, check boxes and lines, um, to do a little test print to make sure that you're happy with the size of your spacing and your check boxes and all that stuff before you get way too into making the printable. And then you print it, and if there's anything you want to change, it's just harder to change once you've pretty much done everything. So, anyway, um, I'm going to enter my checkbox into the document. And right now it's just filled in black. Um, so in order to change all that, um, this is what you need to do. For this checkbox, I want the inside of the checkbox to be white. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to come over here to my fill area, kind of like a menu or whatever. And I want um, the inside of the checkbox to be white. So I have the hex code memorized for white. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's just six Fs. It's pretty easy to remember. And then select OK. And once I've done that, you'll see you can't even see the checkbox um, right now because it doesn't have a border. So to give the checkbox a border, you want to select it again. And um, you'll have a stroke menu. If it's not already popped up on your um, Illustrator screen, to pull up the stroke menu, you can just go to Window, and then there's all sorts of menus right here that you can open. And so just select Stroke from that menu, and that menu will pop up. So I want to make the stroke about one point because I don't want it too obnoxiously thick, but I definitely want it to be visible. So um, there it is now with a black border, but I'd like to make this border pink. So to do that, I'm going to click on the stroke menu, which is by the fill menu. And um, again, I've got the hex code memorized for pink. Um, if you know what color you want, but you don't know the hex code, I just recommend getting on Google and Googling color codes or color hex codes or whatever, and you'll find the hex code for any color you could ever imagine. And so there is my checkbox, and I'm going to drag that a little bit closer to Monday. Now I want to create a line to write on. So to do that, I'm going to go to my line tool 
And since I just created the text box, the stroke of one point is still going to be there. But um, just in case you do a few things after you create the checkbox, just make sure you have some sort of stroke for your line or else it's not going to show up um, when you print. So um, you could do one point, two point, or, you know, whatever you wanted. But um, just make sure it's not at zero. So for this weekly spread, I'm going to do two columns. And just keeping in mind that the width of the paper is eight and a half inches, I'm going to make um, each column about four inches to give me just a little bit of space uh, for some margins and for some space in between the columns. So um, in order to keep the width of the column four inches, I need to make the line less than four inches. And I also need to keep the size of the text box or the checkbox, excuse me, into consideration. So I'm going to make the line about 3.5 inches and I'm going to keep the angle at zero. It might, when you do this, it might not automatically be set at zero. So you can just click down here and change it to zero. Um, you always want your line to be zero to keep it straight. Um, Cause if it's not zero, it'll be at an angle. And anyway, there is my line and it's already pink, which is the color that I wanted it. Um, if you wanted your line to be a different color than your checkbox, all you have to do is click, make sure the line is selected and click this stroke menu again. And let's see, I can change it to gray. That's what it would look like if it were gray. Um, but I'm going to keep it pink to match the box. And now it's pink again. So I want to align this with my checkbox, which is really easy to do in Illustrator. And it's one of the reasons why I love Illustrator so much. Um, you just select it and move it up. And once it's even with a uh, the box, you'll see where it'll say intersect and that'll pop up. And right now it's connected to the checkbox. I don't really want it to be connected to the checkbox. I want a little bit of a space in between. So um, I'm going to move it over just a little bit. That's a little too much. Um, let me move this Monday out of the way. It tries to align objects with other objects. So if your header's in the way, you can just move it out of the way for a minute to do this part. Um, so anyway, I'm going to move it just a little bit closer, but still leave a space in between. And there we go. I'm going to move Monday back. Um, now, I want about six lines underneath my headers. So in order to do that, I'm going to group the checkbox and the line together. And to do that, I'm, I have to make sure both of them are selected. And then I select object and group. And now it's grouped together, so when I click the line, it'll also select the checkbox. And now I need to copy this. So in order to do that, I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and drag this checkbox down. And if you want to keep it aligned um, while you're moving it down, you can select Shift as well, and that'll keep it where it, uh, you can't move it. And um, anyway, sorry, I let Shift go. I'm going to move that about right here. And so, since I want, I'm going to move it down a little bit more. Sorry about that. Um, since I want six lines um, total, but I only have two right now, the easiest way to do that is to um, use your blend tool to create the additional lines. So, to do that, you select your blend tool from your toolbar over here. And make sure that you double click it. If you single, if you just click one time, this menu doesn't pop up. And um, I already have specified steps selected. It usually automatically goes to smooth color, but I've been playing in Illustrator today, so it was on my last setting. But anyway, select specified steps. And since I already have two lines here, but I want six lines total, I will have specified steps set to four. Um, but if you wanted seven lines and you only had two lines there, you would select, you would type in five or, you know, just whatever, however many lines you need. So I'm going to type in four and hit OK. And then I'm going to click the top box and the bottom box and it'll insert the additional lines for me and they're all perfectly spaced. And this now just becomes one whole object. So, um, 
Now I want to align this with the Monday header. Um, first I'm going to move this up a little bit. I just want it a little bit closer. That's a little too close to the Y. Um, okay, so to align the header with the center of your checklist, you select the checklist and Monday and then you pull up your align tool. Mine is already pulled up, but again, just like the stroke menu, um, you can select window and then select align and your menu should pop up if it's not already up. And then you want to align the objects horizontally. So you'll select that and now it's all perfectly aligned. And there it is, pretty much. That's how you create a checklist. It's super simple, and I mean, I, I do this every single day. It's just really, really easy to do. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned how to create a checklist in Illustrator.